Hello, everyone, and welcome to Arts Alive here on Channel 95. Uh, it's my pleasure to have with us today the Evening Sky Band with the leader here. Leader, non-leader, whatever. <laughs> the bass player. Okay, Joe Potenza. I, I think you did put the group together, though, if I'm not mistaken. Not really. No, no, really. No, it it kind of came together uh, through a mutual, uh, a, a, a lot of cross-pollination. Gino played with Chris. I played with Gino. I knew Eric. Uh, and Eric had a studio. It's um, I'm definitely not the leader. I'm the bass player. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've got a we've got a a, a non-committal group here <laughs> where everyone's the leader. That's great. No problem, right? It's a democratic society. Very, very democratic. More so than a lot of other things that should be democratic. But anyway, we'll leave that for another discussion, another time. And uh, do you want to start? Do you wanna, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Joe? And then I'll talk to the others, too. Okay, well, I've, I've been playing in the Rhode Island area uh, for, for the, uh, a long time. This, this year was the 50th anniversary of my first gig ever. So really? I played with a bunch of people. Gino, when Gino settled in the area uh, after 20 years in the Navy, he and I wound up doing a lot of gigs together and became very friendly and musically simpatico. Um, he wound up on a session with Chris Brooks playing pedal steel and emailed me the next day very excited about the sound and we got to find a drummer and who, you know, who would be the right drummer for this. And the first guy that came to mind was Eric Hastings, uh, one of the most versatile drummers I've played with in a long time. We got together not knowing what exactly kind of material we'd play, but we sorted it out. Gino had some compositions. We all had mutual uh, likes. We all like Bill Frizzell. We all like Pat Metheny. We all like um, roots music and jazz music. And the band just kind of evolved from there. Nice, yeah. I was reading. I have some cheat sheet here. And I was reading a little bit about you as a young man starting out with music. And why don't you just tell us a couple of stories about that? I think it's good for parents, too, to understand how important parents can be in supporting this love in their, in their children. The greatest gift my parents gave me was to buy me a bass guitar uh, when I was 14 years old. Uh, they gave everybody a chance to play a musical instrument in the family, and there were six of us. Uh, so there were a couple of guitar-playing brothers, and eventually uh, I settled on bass. And... Um, I thought it was going to be just for laughs. They decided, no, you should have a proper instrument, and they bought me a professional-grade instrument, uh, and I just it kind of went from there and supported us all along the way, even though we made a ton of noise in their third-floor apartment. Yeah, I was going to say, it wasn't. we're not talking about a moneyed family here either. No, my father was a truck driver and uh, was a single-income family with six kids, but they made sure we had the opportunity, and, uh, you know, just just to be exposed to that as a young kid and given the opportunity and encouraged and not told, hey, stop it, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing that. But uh, my, they were very supportive. I, you know, I, um, that's the greatest gift they've ever given me. Yeah. Bless them for all of that. And, and uh, what is the first number you're gonna do now? Say it again? First number that you're doing. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this, is gonna, this is the deaf bass player from too many years, 50 years of playing gigs. This is, a, this is a tune that was written by Gino Rosati. It's called Van Cleef. Okay, here we go with Van Cleef.
Wow, that sounded great. And you would be the composer of that piece, am I right? Yes. Gino Rosati. Yes. So how did you get started in the uh, in this wonderful field of music and playing? And it's a long story. So, uh, so I started playing the guitar when I was like 14. And uh, when I was a kid, I actually just wanted to play hockey. But, you know, couldn't ice skate well. So anyways, uh, my mom took my brother to take a bass, bass lesson because he, he got a bass for Christmas. And, I, and she was asking me the whole time, do you want to play guitar? Do you want to play the playing side? No, leave me alone. I just want to play hockey, you know. And uh, so she took me along because I was a kid. And when uh, my brother signed up for bass lessons, I was in a music store in front of all these cool musicians. And she asked me, well, do you want to play guitar? You wait here. It's cheap. And, oh, all right. So I signed up to play guitar. And after one lesson, I was hooked. Oh, great. Great story, yeah. And then you got into writing, composing, as well as uh, yeah. playing, yeah? Uh, so what, what inspired that last uh, song, that last number? I, you know, I don't know. I think it's, you know, I, the tunes I write for this band are specifically for this band and this sound with Chris. And so, you know, I was just trying to get like a western-y type of sound, you know, and almost like a, something like a movie, movie music too also, yeah, yeah. like a, something that would like convey a mood. And so that's what came out. And I brought it to these guys, and they did most of the work. Well, it sounds wonderful. Yeah, great okay. piece. Awesome to play with. I love these guys. Now, do you want to? Can you introduce the next number? Uh, what are we doing? Fame Street. Yeah. Fame Street. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
So we're going to talk to you now, Chris, Chris Brooks. We are. I'd be happy to talk to you. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. So you're on the pedal steel guitar. Wow, I love it. Thank you very much. It's rather complex and unusual, but uh, there are those of us who play it or, or try to. That's a good thing. Thank so you. So tell me how you got tell me how you got started on this uh, on this, which, as you've said, is not the ordinary guitar. Right. Um, well, like Joe, my family uh, encouraged music. We all had music lessons. I started playing the trumpet in sixth grade and then the tuba and the trombone. But one of my friends was in a little band at the age of 15, and so I got intrigued with the guitars. I started playing guitars. 20 years later, as a pro guitar player, I saw a pedal steel guitar in the window of a famous uh, New York music store, and I bought it. And I didn't know what I was getting into, but it became my main instrument. It's great. It looks great. It sounds great. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And how did you, well, you're telling us how you got started in that and, uh, and how you found, uh, in, in a way, a little bit accidentally, the pedal steel guitar. Accidentally, uh, serendipitously, like a lot of things happen in life. Uh, yeah, you go by a music store and there's an instrument that calls to you. Uh, you sit back in the tuba section and you make friends with a drummer who happens to be in a little uh, band around Washington, D.C., and pretty soon you, you carry their instruments and then they let you play bass. Oh, nice. That was my start. And, and are you originally from this area, from the New England area? Dad worked, Dad worked for the government. We uh, lived all around, or out of Washington, D.C., and Hartford, and uh, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire, and uh, California, and Hawaii, and that brings me up to age 20. Hey, nice. <laughs> no, I've worked all over uh, uh, the United States and in many uh, 15 or 18 foreign countries. Uh, and uh, then I went into another line of work, uh, education, and I did that for 30 years while playing, uh, retired a couple of years ago from Community College of Rhode Island, and uh, my musical life has flourished now, uh, partly uh, thanks to these guys right here. That's great. Evening Sky, all of you in Evening Sky. Yep. Yeah? It's a happy accident. A happy accident. Those are sometimes the best, aren't they? That's going to be the title of my next <laughs> <laughs> and, and what is our next number? Montana Sky. I just heard that. This is an atmospheric uh, tune from the sensitive side of our uh, composer, uh, Gino Rosati, uh, and it's, it evokes uh, uh, the sky of Montana, where I lived for four very interesting and wonderful years. Yeah. It's a big sky out there, and so this is Montana Sky. Montana Sky, everyone.
and that was another beautiful number by Gino Rosati. Yes, Montana Sky. Now I'm going to make my way in here to Eric Hastings. Hello, who was playing a very colorful set of drums here, doing a great job with it too, I might add. Yeah, Thank tell us much. a little bit about you, Eric. I'm Eric. <laughs> Hastings. I live in Providence, Rhode Island, and I feel lucky to be playing with these guys. It's been great pleasure. Um, those three songs are actually from three different records we've released in the past two years. Two of them came out this year, one of them last year, so each from a different record. Um, one of them with a couple guests, and um, the next one we will play has not been released yet and is written by Chris Brooks oh, over okay. here. All right, and what might that be? It's called For Ernest. All right, we ready to go with that? Here we are. Okay. And that's it, Evening Sky. Great performance, guys. Uh, look for this group when you're out, or this band when you're out in the community. And please, uh, you know, support live music. There's nothing like it. So this is what you'll get to see and hear when you go. 
Uh, so I want to thank all of you for joining us with the Arts Alive today. Uh, I'm Kathy Castro, your host, and until the next time.